Hi, today I'm going to explain exactly how you can needle felt this cute little bunny rabbit. Also, as we go along, I'll share some of my tips and techniques with you. And at the end, I'll show you how I made the rabbit's basket and carrots. Okay, bunny, don't worry, we're going to get started now. Right, so for the head, take some core wool and roll it up as tightly as you can. This will give you an idea of its size once needle felted. Remember, it'll reduce by about a third. Stab this all round to create an oval ball that's slightly narrow at the top of the head. Do the same to create the body from a bit more core wool, making sure that you stab one side of the body flat so that it can sit up and won't fall over. Do this by stabbing at an angle of 90 degrees to the base of your rabbit's body. You want to make the head and body the same width and height, just slightly different shapes. The head and body I've made here are both 3.5 cm wide and 3 cm tall, or 1 and 3 8 of an inch wide and 1 and 3 16 of an inch tall. Next, I covered the head and body with some cream or off-white merino wool tops or carded wool. But you don't have to do this if you're happy with the core wool texture. Now create a dip in the top of the body so that when we attach the head, it'll sit in this dip so that the head won't look like it's perched on the top. Do this by stabbing directly down into the top area to create a concave circle, making sure you place the head into the dip with the narrowest part of the head at the top. Take a clump of cream or off-white wool, wrap it round the rabbit's neck like a scarf, and needle felt upwards into the head and downwards into the body. Make sure you work round this joint to make sure it's secure. Take two similar amounts of cream or off-white wool and roll them into a ball between your fingers to check that they're the same size. Take one of the pieces and holding it down with your fingernail, stab it all round to make a half dome shape. Be careful not to stab yourself here, you might want to use finger protectors. Once you've made two feet, you're going to place them at the bottom of the bunny and stab all round the edge of the foot to attach it to the base. To get both paws the same size and shape, draw a template for the paw. Mine is 6mm wide by 12mm is long or a quarter of an inch wide and half an inch long. Lay out two pieces of the cream or off-white wool that are about the same size and making sure that there is plenty of room around the edge of the template. Needle felt all around three sides of the template to get the initial shape but not round one of the narrow edges. We'll use this unfelted end of the paw to attach it to the body or if you don't want to use a template for the paws you could just roll up some wool into a small cylinder and stab that into shape. Fold the excess felt from the three sides and stab it down making sure that you keep the original shape. This will bulk out the paw. If your paw is still looking a bit flat, fold in some of the fluffy wool from the bottom unfelted edge upwards and use this to bulk out the middle some more. Leave some unfelted wool to attach it though. Peel the paw from the mat and needle felt it all round until smooth and not as fuzzy. Make another paw in exactly the same way, then spread out the fluffy end of the paw and attach it so that the bottom of the paw is about halfway down the body and both paws are angled in towards each other. Stab all around where the paw touches the body to keep it in place. Place some cream or off-white wool onto your your mat and draw the shape of a rabbit ear so that you can make this rabbit exactly the same size and shape as I've done here. I've created a downloadable PDF on Etsy with all the templates for the ears, eyes, paws, basket and carrot for this needle felted bunny. If you'd like to support the channel in this way there's a link in the description below. Using the ear template draw around the shape and fold in the wool from the sides and the top to make the ear thicker like we did with the paws. Peel it from the mat and neaten up the edges and stab it all over to make it less fuzzy. Then when making the second ear place the template on the wall the opposite way up so that it curves to the left. Take a thin narrow piece of pink wool and spread it evenly along the inside of each ear. Leave a border of white showing that's about 2mm or 1 8 of an inch wide. With the left ear, fold the end over to make it look like it's flopped over. Holding it in this position, stab along the fold on both sides of the ear until it holds that shape. Attach each ear by spreading out the unfelted wool and positioning them towards the back of the head as you look sideways. Stab all around the base of the ear and over the fluffy wool to make sure the ears attached. Make sure you attach the second ear right next to the first. But don't worry if you attach them in the wrong place, you can tease them off and reattach them if necessary. I actually have a video showing you how to remove things like ears and eyes and fix felting mistakes. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Take another amount of cream or off-white wool and roll it up into a small cylinder. Don't forget once felted it'll reduce by about a third. Stab the cylinder all over, remembering to angle your needle into the centre of the cylinder. The angle of your needle is important when shaping the wool. Imagine you're pushing the wool in the direction of your needle. After stabbing for a few minutes, the muzzle should end up being almost one and a half centimetres or nine sixteenth of an inch wide. If you look at this image of the rabbit, you'll see that the top of the muzzle is just halfway down the rabbit's face. So look at your rabbit's head straight on using your felting needle to indicate the halfway line down its head and position the top of the muzzle so that it's touching that line. Once you're happy with the position, stab all around the base of the muzzle into the head. Now we're going to make its cute little pink nose. Take a very small amount of pink carded or merino wool and roll it into a small ball. 
Once felted it will be about 4mm or 1 8 of an inch in diameter. Stab this small amount of wool a few times so that it's a very rough bowl shape. Then place it right in the middle on top of the muzzle and stab and shape it some more while we're attaching. Try to make a sort of triangle shape. To shape the muzzle a bit more, stab a straight line down from the middle of the rabbit's pink nose. This will split the muzzle in two and gives it a more bunny-like shape. Go over this line with just your needle four or five times until it becomes indented. I recommend that you place a piece of fabric or old sheet over your mat before felting the whites of the eyes, as I found that even though I thoroughly cleaned my mat beforehand with the lint remover, the coloured strands of wool got mixed in and spoilt them a bit. I do love this wool buddy mat, but it does shed a few fibres now and again. For the eyes you'll need two pieces of bright white wool, so that they stand out from the body. If you don't have any bright white, you could use a small amount of polyester stuffing. Lay two thin layers of wool on your mat and draw a small oval, which is 11mm long or 7 16ths of an inch by 8mm or 5 16ths of an inch wide. Once you've drawn this oval shape, stab in the middle and fold over the excess wool and stab that down. You might need to cut some of the excess wool away if there's too much. Anyway, you're aiming to create a flat oval piece of felt. It doesn't need to stand out from the head. Turn it over and stab the other side and around the edge until it's less fuzzy. To make the edges neater, hold the eyes between two rulers and stab along the edge. This way you're less likely to stab your fingers. If you always struggle to get the pupils of the eyes right, then you could felt the pupils onto the whites of the eyes now before attaching them to the head. Then you can just make some more if they do go wrong. However, I've attached the whites of the eyes onto the rabbit first. Place the eyes right above the muzzle and nose in the centre of the head, with the two eyes touching in the middle. Stab them all round to attach them to the head. Then angle your needle at about 45 degrees to the surface of the eyes and stab all round the edge to make them slightly rounded rather than just flat. Check that they're both similar in size and shape. To make the black pupil of the eye, again I recommend that you take two tiny pieces of black wool and roll them in between your fingers so that you can feel if they're about the same size. Decide where you want the pupils to be and take one of the pieces of wool and stab it in a couple of times. Then check that it's in the right place. As you stab, angle your needle at 45 degrees again to the surface in the direction you want the black wool to go. Guide the wool into the centre, forming a 4mm diameter circle that's not quite 3 sixteenths of an inch. Only stab the eyes lightly until you're happy that you have a nice round shaped eye. To add the white highlight to the eye, we do the same as we did for the black part of the eyes and roll two small pieces of white wool between your fingers into a small ball. Very lightly stab each one into the top right hand corner of the black circle of the eye. Only stab this a few times until you're happy with the shape. If you stab it too much, the white will disappear into the head. If this happens though, just take some more white wool and apply it over the top in the same place. Before you start applying the black wool on the feet and paws, I recommend that you mark on the rabbit's foot where the black lines need to go by stabbing a line just with your needle first. This will give you a guide to follow. There should be two lines on each foot. Take a long piece of wool and twist it to form a thin thread. This will give you an idea of thickness once felted. I'm using merino wool tops or roving here. It's better to start with less than you think you might need, as you can always add more if needed. Start from underneath the foot, hold a thin thread of wool over the indented line you marked on the foot earlier. Notice that I've not started felting the line with the very end of the piece of wool as this will make the line thinner. Once you've stabbed along the line, trim the ends with scissors and stab any loose threads in. Also go over the line to make sure it's felted into the foot. Repeat this process for all the other lines on the feet and paws. There should be eight lines in total. If you find this too fiddly, you could always leave the paws and feet as they are. Take a very small piece of bright white wool and roll it between your fingers into a ball. You might want to wear your finger guards for this bit. Carefully hold down the wool with one finger and stab it into a rough square shape that is four millimetres or three sixteenths of an inch wide. Stab it at right angles to make three straight edges, then stab in a line down the middle to divide it into two teeth. Attach the teeth to the bottom front of the muzzle by stabbing up through the teeth into the muzzle. Now we're going to add a tail. Take a small piece of cream or off-white wool and roll it into a ball and stab it all round, remembering to angle your needle into the centre of the ball. Felt the tail until you're happy with its shape. You don't need to stab the tail for very long. As long as you have a rough ball shape, the fuzziness makes the tail look quite nice and fluffy. To create the whiskers, I threaded a sewing needle with a length of invisible nylon thread, which you can get from most craft or haberdashery stores. Take the needle through the muzzle area in three different angles. Each time, cut the thread so that he has nice long whiskers that are just slightly wider than his head. Here are the directions I took the needle through the muzzle. Where's that basket full of carrots you promised me? Uh, what's the magic word? Sorry, please, would you make me some carrots and a basket? Okay, since you asked nicely. 
Now we've come to a section that I'm going to call fiddly but fun. Making the basket and carrots is a bit fiddly, but I'd encourage you to have a go. I'm going to use the basket template from my template sheet, which is available in the link below, but you could draw this shape and create your own template. This template's about two and a half inches or 6.5 centimeters long. Put down a thin layer of light brown, carded or merino tops roving wool and stab all around the template to get the outline of the shape. This shape will be curled round to make the body of the basket. Stab inside the outline and fold over the excess wool from around the outside into the middle and stab that down. Once you've stabbed this for a couple of minutes, carefully peel it off your mat and stab all over the other side until it looks smooth and less fuzzy. If you found this video helpful, it will make my day if you click the like button. This really helps me to know what kind of content you want me to make more of and helps others to see the video too. Neaten up the longest edge which will make the top of the basket using the rulers as we did earlier. Now for the fiddly bit. Curl this piece of felted wool round so that the short sides overlap by about 2mm or 1 16th of an inch. And being very careful not to stab yourself, stab along the overlapped edges. This will sew the two edges together to make a small tube. Notice how I'm pinching it together between my thumbnail and index fingernail. That way I know my finger inside the tube is no further than my thumb so that I don't stab myself. You should end up with a tube which is slightly narrower at one end. The narrower end is going to be the bottom of the basket. To form the bottom cut a small slit that's about 3mm or 1 8th of an inch in length at one side of the basket and another at the opposite side. These slits will then allow you to fold each side of the basket up, which will then form a base. As you can't stab this with your finger inside, take an old kitchen sponge and cut a small piece that will fit inside the basket. With the sponge inside, stab straight down into the bottom of the basket and stab all around the base of the basket until smooth and flat. To make the handle, lay some more light brown wool on your mat and felt it in a line that's about 2mm or 1 16th of an inch wide. This is to make a thin strip of felted wool. Once you've stabbed it for about a minute, carefully peel it off and stab it until it's no longer fuzzy. You may need to use the two rulers again to neaten up the edges. Place one end of the handle inside the basket just in the middle of one of the sides, overlapping by about 7mm or a quarter of an inch. Stab this on the inside of the basket to attach it. Once it's securely attached, bend the handle over to the other side and attach it in the same way. Take a small piece of bright orange wool and roll it into a cylinder, but roll one side of the cylinder tighter than the other. You'll need to decide which end is the thin end and which end is the wide end before you start. Keep the carrot shape in your mind as you stab it. Stab all down the carrot and at the wide end stab sideways so that you're reducing the length of the carrot but bulking out that end with more wool. Keep rotating and stabbing the carrot. Remember the direction and angle of your needle is always important when shaping. I stabbed the carrot for about six minutes to make it this small. Take a tiny piece of green wool and roll it between your fingers into a small cylinder and then keep stabbing and rotating it until you have a very small shape. This doesn't have to be a very neat shape, it's only to suggest some foliage. Then stab one end of the green wool into the top of the carrot to attach it. Here's the finished bunny rabbit with his basket and carrots. If you'd like to support my channel by downloading the PDF templates and instructions, the link to my Etsy shop is in the description below. I'd be ever so grateful. Oh, and don't forget to click the like button, subscribe and click the bell so that you get notified about my next video. I've really enjoyed making him. And if you'd like to know how I needle felted the cat, click here. Thanks for watching.